It's Christmas time, and instead of spending time with friends and family, you decide that you're overdue for some travel. Instead of visiting grandma or going home for Christmas dinner just so you can get into political fights with your drunk libertarian uncle, you decide that this year you're taking a me holiday and book yourself a plane ticket to the heart of China. On your way there, you end up missing the heart by a few thousand kilometers and instead end up in Wuhan. But hey, it's a new place, a foreign culture, and it's all very exciting anyway. Eager to dive into the local Chinese culture, you hop out of your plane and head to the first place you've read about, the Hanan Seafood Wholesale Market. Upon arriving, you notice two things. The place sells a whole lot of land animals for it to be called a seafood market, and most of those animals are very much alive. In fact, the entire thing is rather macabre and definitely depressing. You find everything from porcupines to bats, and even wolves just sitting in cages next to freshly skinned corpses of what you can only assume were their former compatriots. You very quickly decide to end your visit, realizing you've walked head-on into an animal cruelty nightmare. And as you quickly leave the market, you decide that you really need to think your sightseeing through a little bit more. China is one of the earliest human civilizations. There's plenty of cultural wonders to see elsewhere. On the way out of the market, though, that's when you spot it, a snake slithering along the ground, except it doesn't look quite right. Suddenly, the snake stops and starts hacking and coughing, and you realize, OMG, that snake is choking! A crowd gathers around the poor, choking snake, nobody knowing what to do. Luckily for you, though, you just got your CPR certification for your new, totally not depressing job as a mall guard. You're Johnny on the spot and leap to the snake's help. Out of the way, you cry out, shouting your CPR credentials as you shove the crowd aside. The snake is gasping now, it's almost over. You flip the snake on its belly, though, and start doing compressions, humming to yourself the tune to Staying Alive by the Bee Gees, exactly as you've been trained. This is it. This is your moment. You check the airway and you realize there's no obstruction. This snake isn't choking. It's dying. Not on your watch. You didn't take a 12-hour public safety course to earn the coveted mall guard badge in your pocket for nothing. You pry open that snake's mouth and start giving it breaths, quickly followed by more compressions. You continue this cycle of breaths and compressions, working up a fierce sweat. Live, you snake bastard! Live, you cry out! Suddenly, the snake coughs, sputters, and opens its eyes. It's alive. Tears of joy flood down your cheeks. The crowd cheers. A pretty lady faints. You've done it. You've saved this snake's life. With deep gratitude in its eyes, the snake looks up at you and whispers, just faintly enough that only you can hear it. One day, when you need me the most, I promise I'll be there. You leave that market a hero. And hey, you've made a snake friend for life now. Thinking back on that poor snake, you wish him well and go about your trip. It's time to head to some proper tourist destinations and have a blast in China. The whole time, though, something is seriously wrong with you, and you don't even have the slightest clue. Deep in the cells of your body, an invader has taken root. Unknown to you as you were saving that snake's life, it was passing on to you a deadly coronavirus, one of the few that are transmissible between man and animal. Even worse for you, though, is that this is a brand new strain of virus and one that the world is completely unprepared for. The virus inside of you is a stealth assassin. It has one job in its short life, to make as many of itself as possible and then spread its brethren to other hosts. But it can't get caught, so it's learned to remain undetected. You show no symptoms. You feel perfectly fine. You're a snake hero after all. But the entire time the deadly virus within you is busy working. You're slowly dying from the inside and you don't even realize it at all. First, the virus infects healthy cells, inserting genetic code into the cell that forces it to start mass-producing other copies of the virus. This uses up all the cell's energy, and when it's spent up, masses of new viruses burst out of the shriveled up, spent cell, like xenomorphs bursting out of wayward space marine chests. Your body fights back, calling in white blood cells, the heavy hitters of your immune system. The white blood cells are tough, but the virus is even tougher, and unlucky for them, they've never seen anything like this virus before. Normally, white blood cells would call for help from antibodies, but your body has no idea what antibodies to even send. This new virus is like nothing it's ever faced before. Your white blood cells are helpless to stop the infection from growing, and soon you are so filled with the virus that you're infectious. Every time you wipe your snot, cough into your hand, or lick a stranger's plate, you're leaving behind a deadly virus. And the worst part is you're completely unaware. You show no symptoms whatsoever. No serious cough, no fever, no headache no fatigue, nothing. You continue your trip through China not washing your hands after digging 
for gold in your nose, licking every doorknob you come across because, hey, you're on vacation, anything goes, and the entire time you're leaving behind traces of the deadly virus in your veins. Two weeks later, you're finally on your way home. As you board the plane, you feel a little bit fatigued, but hey, you just spent your entire Christmas traveling through the exotic Orient. You're probably just bushed. You look forward to a nice few days at home before returning to the daily grind, and to pass the time on the long flight home, you get into a coughing fight with the kid in front of you. You're both having so much fun that soon the other passengers get in on it. Pretty quickly, the whole plane is laughing and having a good time with an old-fashioned cough fight, everyone doing their best to cough as hard as they can in each other's face. A few days later, you're showing up to your first day at your exciting new mall guard job, but you don't feel so well. You've got a headache and you're developing a nasty cough. Well, you did just travel internationally. You probably picked up a small bug somewhere. It wouldn't be completely unprecedented. You ignore the symptoms and take to your duties as the first, last, and only line of defense against shoplifters and Karens who complain about their expired coupons not being accepted. You've got a runny nose by now, but no big deal. You make sure to wipe away the boogers every time you have to give CPR or shake someone's hand. You know you really should be washing your hands frequently, especially since you've been coughing and sneezing into them a whole lot lately. But hey, the life of a malt guard is a high-stakes, high-pressure gambit, and malt crime doesn't take any breaks, so neither can you. At the end of your first week on the job, you definitely aren't feeling well at all. Your cough has gotten pretty severe, so bad it's starting to hurt when you cough. You've got a full-blown fever, and your uniform sleeve is practically dripping with all the mucus you've wiped on it through the course of your day. Plus, people are starting to complain that their CPR tastes like snot. You know you have to ask for some sick time off, even though it's not really a good look for someone who's literally just started their job. Your boss agrees. The CPR snot complaints have reached his desk. Take some time off, kid. You can't fight mall crime unless you're at your best. Your grizzled veteran of a boss says in between bites of Food Court Panda Express orange chicken. As you get home, though, your vision starts to swim. Your fever is spiking, and you're pretty sure you could cook an egg on your forehead. You drag yourself to the hospital, and as you walk into the emergency room, you collapse in the lobby. When you wake up, you're laying in a hospital bed with an IV in your arms, dripping fluids into your body. The virus has put your body into overdrive, and you're pretty dehydrated. You've been given various cough suppressants and medications for your fever, but they're barely doing anything. To your alarm, on the second day of your stay, the doctor comes into your room, wearing a full-body plastic suit that exposes only his face, which is itself covered by a surgical mask. They wrap your bed in a plastic sheet as the doctor informs you that you've been diagnosed with something strange, a coronavirus they've never encountered before. Given your state, the doctors fear that you've infected many of the medical staff, and so they've been quarantined as well in the hospital's other rooms. Your condition worsens by the day. The virus is replicating completely out of control now. What started off as one little hitchhiker has turned into billions upon billions of copies. A man enters your room in a full-body contamination suit. He sits by your bed and identifies himself as working for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. The CDC is America's frontline defense against disease, even though they forgot to add the P from prevention to their acronym. There's no time for that, the man says as you point out that fact. He has to know where you picked up this strange virus and who you may have been in contact with that could now be infected. Reluctantly, you start back at the beginning, telling him about your impromptu trip to China's Wuhan. You tell him about the seafood market that definitely sold more land animals than seafood. You tell him about the dying snake and the CPR you administered. You tell him about the giant cough fight you started on the plane ride back. The man pats your hand. That was a brave thing you did, giving CPR to that snake. But we're afraid that you've been infected by an animal-borne coronavirus. The snake you saved, it passed it on to you. Then the government man leaves you, scurrying to track down every member of your flight back home from China. By now, the disease could be anywhere and everywhere, and completely undetectable until its sufferers start showing symptoms. Over the course of the next few days, you deteriorate even further. Breathing becomes more than painful, it becomes difficult. Your parents come to visit you, as does the rest of your family. Everyone knows the end is near. Your siblings lean in and kiss you on the cheek through the surgical masks they wear. Even your libertarian uncle shows up, tears in his eyes. He leans in and gives you a kiss on the cheek one last time, whispering reassuringly in your ear, taxes are just another form of theft. Your body can't function properly anymore. The virus has saturated all of its systems to the point that basic functions begin shutting down. Much like an overconsuming humanity, viruses have no sense of self-control, and once they infect a host, they reproduce completely out of control until the host dies from the burden of the virus within it, like the Earth, but with people. The light is fading now, and in your final moments you think back to that snake you saved. 
you remember its parting words to you. One day, when you need me most, I promise I'll be there. Suddenly, you hear a slight hiss, and hope floods your body as you barely manage to lean up just slightly and look around your room. But it's the hiss of your air conditioning unit winding down. As the light fades completely, you think to yourself, man, that f***ing snake lied to me. At your funeral, your supervisor shows up along with several of your co-workers. Using Dick's Sporting Goods air rifles, you're given a 21-gun salute. With somber purpose, your supervisor stands at attention before your grieving mother, handing her a folded Spencer's Band t-shirt, the official flag of mall security. We bet you're probably in the mood for something a little bit happier, so why not click this video over here? Or maybe you'd rather enjoy this video here. Either way, click one now, because the only viral content Infographics puts out is fun, awesome vids.